Harris Chapel. This is indeed another glorious day that the Lord has made. And as always, we should rejoice and be glad in it. We should say as the psalmist declared, for I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And I declare my brothers and my sisters, this is the house of of the Most High God. We want to welcome all those that follow us by way of our media ministry. Welcome to Taylor's Chapel Missionary Baptist Church, where our motto is, everybody is somebody, but most of all, Jesus Christ is Lord. We count it an honor and a great privilege to have you worshiping with us on this day that the Lord has made. We also want to thank you for your continued support of the ministry here at Taylor's Chapel. Amen. And you are able to support the ministry here by way of Cash App. You can do that by typing in 919-770-3065. Or you can type in dollar sign TCMBC. There's also additional ways to support the ministry here at Taylor's Chapel. And that information can be found on our webpage, which is taylorschapel.com. Again, welcome, amen, to Taylor's Chapel. We want to thank everyone, amen, that was involved with our homecoming, which was last Sunday. Amen. Want to uh, thank, thank the kitchen staff, amen, for a job well done. Want to thank the ushers and everyone, amen, that played a part and made our homecoming a tremendous success. Thank you so much. And those that were able to come to our revival, amen, amen. I know and I hope you were blessed. I was tremendously blessed by the man of God, amen. And if by chance you were not able to, to physically make it or you have not been able to view it, go to our webpage. It's on our webpage. Again, that is taylorschapel.com. Amen. And you can hear and receive a word from the Lord. Amen. Again, thank everyone for everything that they did to make our homecoming and a revival a tremendous success. We want to thank God for his grace and also for his mercy. Amen. Amen. Are you happy? Well, let's give God a hand praise. Amen. He's worthy. Amen. To be praised. I like the way the psalmist declared when he said, From the rising of the sun unto the setting of the same, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is worthy. Amen. To be praised. And we have come to lift him up. And we have come to give him glory. Kind of a great honor and great privilege, amen, to have, amen, uh, Pastor Branch here with us, amen, alone, amen, a mother branch, amen. We are so excited about what God is doing in their lives, amen, amen. I also want you to just have your amen. To you. If you, anyone know them, you don't see a bishop, amen, but just keep bishop in your prayers, amen, amen, because God is the God of wonders, amen. We're going to ask at this time, ask this choir, if they would bless us, amen, with a selection. Amen.
me to know that the Lord is good. Amen. I will bless him. Amen. At all times because he is good. Amen. Amen. At this time, we're going to ask uh, Deacon Herman Dowd if he will come and read unto us from the word of God and following the reading of the scripture. Deacon Robert Gosson will come and lead us to the throne of grace. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. God is good, ain't he? Yeah. Can I get an amen? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. amen? We'll be coming from Romans 15th chapter, 1 through 5. Again, may you stand, please. We'll be coming from Romans 15th chapter, 1 through 5. We then that are strong ought to bear the iniquities of the weak and not to please ourselves. Let every one of us please his neighbors for his good to edification. For even Christ pleased not himself, but as it was written, reproaches of them that reproach thee fell on me. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we ought, though through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. Now the God of patience and consolation grant you to be like-minded, like one toward another, according to Christ Jesus. I just read Romans 15 chapter 1 through 5. You may be seated. And may God's word be forever. Amen. Let us pray. Most holy and high Father, Lord Father God, we come to you once more and again, Lord, yes, just Father. to say thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, Father God, for this another day, Lord. Yes, Lord. That we have seen, Lord. Oh, that we haven't seen, but and we'll never see again. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your grace, and thank you, Lord, for your mercy. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord, Father God, that things are as well as they are. Yes, Lord. And for that, Lord, we just want to say thank you. Thank you, Lord. Lord, Father God, we just want to thank you for just coming in, Lord, early this morning, Lord. Yes, Lord. As we slept and slumbered, Lord. Yes, Father. And touched us, Lord, with a finger of love, Lord. Yes, Lord. And started us on our way, Lord. Yes, Lord. For that, Lord, we just want to say thank you. Thank you, Lord. Lord, Father God, we just want to thank you, Lord, for protecting us, Lord, up and down the dangerous highways and byways, Lord. Yes, yes, yes. Lord, Father God, we just want to thank you from the utmost to the utmost, Lord. Yes, Lord. Lord, Father God, we just want to thank you for allowing us to come back into your house of worship just one more time. Yes, 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 Father. Lord, Father God, we realize there was nothing that we've done that was so good. Oh, it was Lord. only by your grace and by your mercy, Lord, yes, that we are still here. Yes. And for that, Lord, we just want to say thank you. Thank you Lord. Lord, Father God, we just want to thank you, Lord, for being our God and allowing us to be your children, Lord. Yes, Father. Lord, Father God, we just want to thank you, Lord, for how you just continue, Lord, to bless us, Lord, over and over again. Lord. Yes, God. Lord, Father God, we just want to thank you, Lord, for how you just continue, Lord, to protect our pastor, Lord, and his oh, family, Lord. Yes, yes, yes. Lord, Father God, continue to lead God and protect them, Lord, from dangerous scene and unseen, oh, yes. Lord. Yes, Lord. Lord, Father God, we just want to continue, Lord, to pray for our associate pastors yes, and their families, Lord. Yes, Lord. Continue, Lord, to touch their hearts and touch their minds, Lord. Yes, God. Have them to do and say, Lord, what you would have them to do and say, Lord. Yes, yes. Lord, Father God, we just want to continue, Lord, to pray for the deacons here, Lord. Yes, continue, Lord, to lead God in our footsteps, Lord. Yes, what we are doing and say was pleasing in our sight, Lord. Yes, Lord, Father God, we just want to pray, Lord, for all the leadership, Lord, that you have here, Lord. Yes, yes. Lord, Father God, we just want to continue, Lord, to pray for the whole entire church congregation, yes, Lord. Yes. Continue, Lord, to move from heart to heart and from yes, breast to yes, breast, yes, Lord. Yes. Lord, Father God, we just want to thank you, Lord, for the branches that are here today, Lord. Yes, yes. Lord, Father God, it could have been anywhere else, Lord, but they decided to come right here at Tillis Chapel Missionary yes, Baptist yes, Church, Lord. Yes, Lord. 
But that, Lord, we just want to say thank you. Lord, Father God, we just want to keep Bishop Branch in prayer, Lord. Continue, Lord, to stand by us forever lean inside. Strengthen him, Lord, where he's weak, Lord. Build him up, Lord, where he's torn down, Lord. Lord, Father God, we just want to continue, Lord, to pray for the sick and the afflicted everywhere, Lord. Lord, Father God, we want to pray for those in the hospitals, Lord. Yes, and those behind the prison walls, Lord. Lord, Father God, we just want to continue, Lord, to pray for the unconcerned, Lord. Yes, that they may get concerned when the blood is yet running warm in their veins, Lord. Lord, Father God, we just want to continue, Lord, to thank you, Lord, from the utmost to the utmost, Lord. Lord, Father God, we just want to continue, Lord, to pray for the sick here at this place, Lord. Lord, Father God, we just want to continue, Lord, to keep Sister Smiles in prayer, Lord. Lord, Father God, we just want to continue, Lord, to keep Reverend Smith in prayer, Lord. And Lord, Father God, anybody else that I might not have called out, Lord, I may not know about, Lord, continue, Lord, to keep them in prayer, too, Lord. Lord, Father God, we just want to continue to pray for Sister McCrimmon, Lord. Continue, Lord, to touch her body in the name of Jesus, Lord. Lord, Father God, stand by her for everything inside you, Lord. Lord, Father God, we just want to continue, Lord, to thank you, Lord, from the utmost to the utmost, Lord. Lord, Father God, we want to continue, Lord, to pray for our musicians, Lord. Lord, Father God, we want to thank you, Lord, for the choir and the choir stand. Lord, Father God, we just want to let... What we do on this side, speak for it when we get on the other side. And we just want to see you face to face, Lord. We just want to walk those streets of gold, Lord. We just want to rest our weary souls, Lord. And hear you say, well done. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. Come on in and I'll make you rule over me. And Lord, Father God, what I fail to ask, Lord, that we are in need of. Please do not fail to grant it unto us, Lord. These blessings and all blessings, we ask in our Son, Jesus' name, amen. 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 We want to thank Deacon Dowdy and Deacon Ghoston for the reading of God's word and for praying on behalf of God's people. Amen. I don't know about you, but I'm happy. Amen. To be in the Lord's house. Amen. amen. And if you're glad to be here, amen, let's give God a hand of praise. Amen. Amen. I'm glad to be, amen, in the house of the Lord. Amen. If God there's healing, amen, in the house of the Lord. There is deliverance in the house of the Lord. There is salvation in the house of the Lord. Whatever your weary soul might need is here in the house of the Most High God. quietly would, amen, to bless us one more time for the selection, amen, and then we will hear, amen, from the word of God. Thank you. 
my sisters, the blood of Jesus Christ will never lose its power, amen. I recall, amen, what the apostles, amen, told the man lying by the gate, a beautiful amen. He told him in the name of Jesus Christ, take up your bed, rise up and walk. There's power in the name of Jesus. It's glamour. 
Have you ever run across a man, uh, an automobile that you considered just to be one of a kind in its day? Now you see it and it does not have that appeal. It's in need of restoration. And I want to say, my brothers and my sisters, so many times that happens. In our Christian walk, if you're not closely attached to Jesus, sometimes we we run across people we know people that may even apply to us. How at one time we were on fire for the Lord. And somehow, in some way, amen, our salvation has lost its glitter. And, and we are not as vibrant as we once were. But I want to let you know that the God that we serve can restore, revitalize, and put shine back in your life. Yes. So if you find yourself, amen, in despair, or you find yourself even in darkness, I want to assure you that the God in whom we serve is a God of restoration. Yes. One of the most rewarding sights in the world and to see something that has fallen into neglect, see it be restored to its usefulness. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Seeing anything brought back its original beauty and its designated usefulness is a wonderful sight. Yes. And there's nothing any more joyous than to see a saint who had gone astray, uh -huh. come back into fellowship Amen. with us as saints of God. Amen. But I want to let you know, my brothers and my sisters, this morning's word, these two verses have an appeal for believers in the church to be restored and for us to restore those who have won. I want to let you know that there is a need for restoration. Amen. There's a need for reconciliation. Yes. There's a need for us as followers of Jesus Christ, amen, to reach out and to effectively, amen, bring those that have lost their way back into fellowship with the Lord. Amen. James began verse 19 with the phrase, a phrase that he had used, amen, some 15 times already in this letter. It's a reminder to us that the church is a family. Yes. That's right. Yes. We are a family because of what Christ has done for us. Amen. We are part, amen, of a spiritual family, my brothers and my sisters. Uh -huh. Amen. And then James goes on to say, if there be any among you. I think the best explanation is that he is referring to those who have professed faith but are not showing evidence or fruits of their faith. Restoration must take place when anyone within the body wanders from the truth. Amen. And John declared in John 17 and 19, as he talked about the word, he said, God, your word is true. So those, amen, who have strayed away from the word of God are standing. 
living in me, amen, of restoration, amen. Yeah. They need to be reunited, amen, yeah. with, amen, the household of faith. Yeah. Understand this, James is addressing people who do not follow scripture. All right. They have received the word, but they, they don't live it out. And in Matthew chapter 13, Jesus gave us a description of people who have allowed this to come. He called this parable the sower and the seed. Those who have received the word but are not living it out. Come on. This is what Jesus said as he talked, amen, about the sower and the seed. Jesus said, and when he spoke many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow. And when he sowed, some seed fell by the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured them up. Some fell upon thorny places for they had not much earth. And for when they sprang up, because they had no depths of earth. Amen. But when the sun was up, they were scorched. And because they had no root, they withered away. He went on to say, and some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up and choked them. But then he talked about that which fell on good ground and which brought forth much fruit. Yes. And Jesus explains, amen, this and how, amen, this happens, amen, that people receive the word, amen, but they don't live it out. Amen. He declared that when one hears the word of the kingdom and understands this not, then comes the wicked one and catch away that which was sown in his heart. Oh, that this is he which receives seed by the wayside. Mm -hmm. Those that come to church and hear the word of God, amen, but they never seem to receive that which has been sown, amen, in their lives, amen. And before it can take root, amen, and grow, the enemy comes and snatches it up. Bucks it up, amen, out of their heart. Therefore, they cannot, amen, flourish because, amen, the seed has been taken away. Amen. But then Jesus gives us another example, amen, of that which has been sown among the thorns. These are those, amen, that receive the word of God gladly. And they began, amen, with joy, amen, to walk in the word. Amen. But as soon as hard times come, Amen. as soon as they are persecuted for the word's sake, Amen. Amen. as soon as someone don't speak to them in church, right. they think yeah. ought to have spoken to them. Yeah. As soon as the choir don't sing their favorite song, yeah. as soon as the choir leader don't let them sing, Amen. as soon Amen, as someone say something they don't like as soon as a preacher preaches something they don't want to hear or as soon as they see someone amen amen they just give up and walk away i can't understand for the life of me how you can receive amen the word of almighty god and walk in the light amen that it provides amen and then you turn right around and find yourself dwelling once again in darkness. Jesus said the reason this takes place, amen, is because you're not rooted and grounded in the word. In other words, you ain't put no effort in prayer. You haven't taken no time to read the word. You do not come to Bible study. You do not come to Sunday school, amen, and you think you're going to be able to flourish, amen, in this Christian journey but let me tell you, Jesus said, the thief cometh not but for the kill, to steal, and to destroy. And I want to let you know, if you're on the Lord's side, you've got to spend some time with him. The Lord said, if I abide in you, and you abide in me, you can ask what you will 
of the Father, and he would do it. He also said, and then James, the Bible says, resist to them. Resist to them. You got to put up some kind of resistance, amen. When evil thoughts and evil deeds run through your mind, you got to learn to resist and just, and old slow would just say no. You got to just say no. No, I'm not going to do that. Why? Because, amen, my salvation is at stake. It's at stake. But if by chance you yield to temptation, the songwriter said it like this now. He said, yield not to temptation, for yielding is sin. But just in case, I know we have, amen, a human factor, amen, and our human side, amen, our natural side is always in constant battle with our spiritual man, amen. And if by chance, amen, your natural man, amen, has found a way, amen, to supersede, amen, your spiritual man, amen, and cause you, amen, to do things you would not do. Yes. How do I know that happened? Because the apostle Paul said, when I would do good, evil is present with me. But then he asked the question, who shall deliver me from this body of death, O wretched man that I am? And he had the solution, and the solution was Jesus. Christ and his blood that was shed on Calvary. So if you find yourself, or if you know someone that is strayed from the truth, Amen. I want to let you know because we are a family, yeah. we have a responsibility yes. to do some restoration work. Yes. yes. We have a responsibility oh, yes. to help them find their way. Yes. Yes. Understand this, my brothers and my sisters. Restoration must take place mm -hmm. when anyone within the body wanders from the truth. Yes. And so many times, amen, yes. we have this ingrained from us through society. Mm -hmm. So many times as saints of God, amen, we, we, we see wrong and, and we, we want to, 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 to speak against that wrong. But society will tell you, well, you're just trying to judge. You ought not to judge. Oh, amen. But, but the Bible tells us yeah. that we will know a tree. How? By the fruit it bears. You won't know, amen, a saints of God by the life that they live. You won't know who's on the Lord's side by the conversation that they take, amen. You're going to know who's on the Lord's side by the compassion in their heart. You're going to know who's on the Lord's side, amen, by the display of love. We have to know we have to remember that we are family. Yes, sir. And I don't know about you, but love requires action. Yes, sir. Now you, if I'm in despair and if I'm in need, you can tell me you love me all you want. <laughs> But I'm, going, I'm not going to have confidence in your statement until you do something to help me. And we say we love our brothers and our sisters in the Lord, amen. But when we see them in error from the truth, amen, that we don't help them find their way, amen, back to the road that is called straight, amen. My question is, how deep is your love? Is your love, amen, for, for your fellow man? Or is your love for yourself and for your self-image, amen? Are you afraid of confrontation, amen? Just because, amen, you want to make sure, amen, that you don't offend anybody. I'm not saying go out and be a praise, amen. But what I am saying, amen, you got to show your love for your brothers and your sisters that is wonder, amen, from the house of the Lord. You got to 
charge and argue, amen, and allow the world to move around us and we are blind to everything. But I stop by to tell you, my brothers and my sisters, in this restoration time in the house of the most high God, In Christ, yes. we cannot allow. We should not allow. Let me rephrase that. We should not allow. We should not allow our brothers and our sisters in the faith. We should not allow them to walk any kind of way without correcting them in love. We have to do something. There's a process of restoration as well. James goes on to say if a believer wanders Someone needs to turn them back. Someone needs to help them find their way back to the Lord. Now understand this. Uh, this may not be an easy task. Because you may not know why that person have strayed uh -huh. from the faith. Uh -huh. But regardless of the reason, we need to be persistent. We need to let them know, well, I'm there for you. Yes. And then we need to be there. That's right. Then we need to be there. I'm not saying that saints of the living God that we gonna have all the answers. Because if I tell you that, I'm telling I'm not telling you the truth. We're not gonna have all the answers. But we have access to a God. In which nothing's too hard for him. We have access to God who can do exceedingly and abundantly. Above all that we can ask yes. or even think. Yes. So we don't need to have all the answers. No. All we need to do is have access to God. Right. That's all we need to do. Yes. If you can't do anything else, lift them before the Lord in prayer. Yes. If they don't want to hear, amen, what you're trying to say, Instead of badging them and beating them up, amen, just get in your secret closet and in your prayer time, amen, lift them before the Lord. Is there anybody in here that knows prayer changes things? Can I hear one written in this place? And to talk to the Lord. Yes. Now understand this now. When James made a statement, James said someone needs to turn him back. Yes. Notice he didn't mention uh, the preacher needs to go out and turn him around. Amen. He didn't say the elder needs to go out there and turn him around. Amen. He didn't even say that the teacher needs to go out there and turn them around. But James said somebody. Somebody. Right. So by him saying somebody, that's a testimony that's all of our business. That's right. That's all of our business. Yes. And so many times we'll, we'll use this as for an excuse. You know, well, they grown. 
they'll, 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 they'll figure it out. You know, I don't want to get, you know, I don't want to get in nobody's business, you know. Uh, they grown folk, you know, they, they'll figure it out, you know. But what we have to be mindful of is death can come at any time. It can come for us or it can come for them. And understand this, saints of God. The Bible declared that all of us are going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ. All of us that are saints of God, one day we're going to stand before Jesus Christ, the righteous judge. And it says we're going to give an account of every deed done in our mortal bodies. Whether good or bad, we are going to have to stand before a just and a righteous and holy God and give an account of the things we did and also for the things we have an opportunity to do and fail to do. So we have to be mindful. And we have to be persistent mm -hmm. in love. Yes. And this process of restoration has uh, two components. And both of these components are vital. <coughs> and the first component is attitude. That's it. Attitude. Mm -hmm. This is what Paul declared in Galatians chapter 6, verse 1. He said, Brethren, if any man is overtaken in any trespass, you are a spiritual, restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness. Then he says, consider yourselves. Then she also be tempted. And in dependence of the spirit, we are to gently and humbly restore. Not grudgingly, not judgmentally criticizing someone. Because nine times out of ten, if people, if a person have any self-awareness, they have any type of relationship with the Lord or have had a relationship with the Lord, and they walk, amen, in accordance to the spirit of the living God, when you get in error, you know you're in error. That's right. That's right. Now, whether you do anything about it or not, that's up to you. But the Lord is going to make it known yes. unto you. Yes. Therefore, the person that we're trying to help restore back into the fellowship, we don't need to beat them up with what they're doing wrong. Amen. Because chances are, they already know. Yes. What they need is assistance as to how to get out of that rug. Right. They need right. another path, right. another direction, another course right. to take that will get them around this impediment that they have in their walk of life. Yes. Then, it requires action. We are turning back. That's our goal. Our goal is not to beat them up. Our goal is not to criticize. Our goal is not to point out all their faults because they're already aware. Our goal is to restore them. That's our goal. Our goal is not to say, well, I know, I, I knew they wasn't about much. I didn't think they had it. Oh, oh, this is, oh, this conversation takes place. I'm not saying anything that people don't say. Well, I know, I, I didn't think they had much anyway. You know, I was just standing around going to see how long they were going to last, you know. As saints of the living God, our job is to bring them back in fellowship. Yes, yes. That's that's our that's our goal. Yes. That's our objective. Amen. Our goal is not to 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 prove, Amen, no. anything. No. It's just to restore them that's back it. 
unto fellowship. We're not trying to prove a point. We're trying to restore someone to fellowship. It's restoration time, saints of God. It's time for us to reach out to those that we know that have strayed from the faith. And that's all of our job. It's just not the preacher's job to check on folk and, 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 try, and try to bring them back to church. It's not just the deacon's job. It's not just the trustee's job. It's not just the executive board's job trying to figure out how to maintain things. It's all of our job. Because we are a family in Christ Jesus. It's all of our jobs. But just think about the results, amen, of this restoration. Because, because James tells us, amen, that there is, amen, benefits, amen, for us, amen, and even for that one which has been restored. Because he said this in verse 20, let him know that he which converteth the sinner from the error of his ways shall save his soul from death and shall hide multitude sin. Remember this, who turned the sinner from the error of his way would save a soul from death. Amen. And also, because they have been restored, it's going to cover a multitude of sin. Amen. And understand this, turning is a, an issue of repentance. That's our goal. Our goal is to bring about repentance. Right. Understand this, my brothers and my sisters. Turning someone from sin introduces them to the forgiveness of God. Amen. And that's what that, that's what we're trying to get. Yes. We're trying to get them back, amen, in fellowship yes. with God. Yes. We're trying to restore a relationship that has been broken. Yes. We're trying to, David said this, David said, Lord, restore the joy of thy salvation. Yes. Amen. We are trying to reconnect them, amen, with the joy of salvation. We are trying to bring them, amen, back into the household of faith. We are trying to get them back in line so they can and will be recipients of eternal life through Christ Jesus. That's our goal. Amen. Understand this, my brothers and my sisters. Almost every church, every church road includes more people than those that are teen. That's Taylor's Chapel in every church across America. 99.9.9% of them. Amen. have more people on their church roll yes. than people that actually attend. Yes. So what does that say? It says, saints of God, it's restoration time. Yes. Yes. It's time for us, amen, to reach out, amen, to those individuals, amen, who have found themselves straying from the truth. Yes. That's every church. Yes. What about, and this applies to all of us, what about those in your family? 
who don't follow the Lord closely? Those that are strong in the Lord, we have to bear the infirmities of the weak sometimes. We have to be patient. We have to be kind. We have to have the mind of Christ and love in spite of. In spite of. I heard, amen, I'm reminded, amen, of the message on night one of our revival. We need the mind of Christ. We all need the mind of Christ. And Christ had a mind of restoration. It is Jesus Christ that reconciled us back to God. Those in our families. Think about it. Who is it better to approach them Amen. than you? Amen. In love. Amen. We need to express to our family, our children, grandchildren, aunts, uncles, cousins, you know, no matter how far the branches extend, amen. Any one of your church members, your family members that you have a relationship with, we ought to make an impact. I'm talking about us that, that have a relationship with God. We ought to be the one making the impact. There's a thing now particularly on social media, you know, people are professional influencers. That's what they do. They blog and they do all these things trying to persuade a certain demographic to do this or do that. But as saints and the Most High God, we are to be influencers. We should be the influencers. The world should be trying to imitate our lives instead of us trying to imitate the world. We are the one that has power, and the power is in Christ Jesus. We are the one that's able, amen, to do exceeding abundant above all that is a man in the choir because we have the love of Christ yes. abiding in us. Amen. We ought to be the one, amen, that had, amen, influence in our families. Yes. And understand this, every family has an influence. Yes. Whether it's good or bad. Yes. Whether it's good or bad, every family has an influence. Yes. And those of us, amen, who named the name of Jesus, yes. we ought to make sure that we are the dominant personality in our household. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And when we stand up for what's right, Amen. and when we talk the truth, not only talk, we better live the truth now, yes. when we live out the truth, so. you can have an impact. And understand this, my brothers and my sisters, people you think they're not looking, oh, they're looking. They're looking. They're looking. And most of the time, they're looking for an influence. And I'm going to conclude this thing, but if you're here and you have never trusted Christ, he has placed all of these people in his congregation. Today, to help you. To help restore you.
my challenge is that we all commit ourselves to the ministry of restoration. Amen. Let's commit ourselves to the challenge of restoration. Let's be influencers for the cause of Christ. Just think about it, amen. Another reason I know, amen, that, that there's need, amen. Like I said, because there's more names on the road mm -hmm. of churches across the land mm -hmm. and those that actually attend mm -hmm. and participate in the ministry. So there, there's room, amen, it's time for restoration. Think about the people, amen, that has come in and out this church. Amen. For whatever reason, they didn't stay. Sometimes it's just because there was no effort made for restoration. But I believe that if we reach out in love, in compassion, in understanding, in prayer, we can make a difference. And we can win those back to Christ who have strayed. Again, when we when you love someone, love requires effort. I don't know about you, amen. But you ever love and love? If, well, let, 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 let me ask this question: How many people in here have had relationships? I mean, with siblings, anybody, sibling, spouses. Girlfriend, boyfriends, whatever. How many in here who have ever been in a relationship that didn't require any effort? Relationships require effort. Love requires effort. Because every day is not going to be the best day. But I can tell you this, every day with Jesus is a day of victory. Yes. Can I get a witness? Yes. It's a day of victory. Yes. So I challenge you, Taylor's Chapel, and I, tell, I challenge those that are watching us by way of our media ministry, if you, amen, have found yourself in error of the truth, I want to let you know that the Lord is saying it's time. It's time to come home. It's time to come home. And don't get caught up, amen. Don't get wrapped up and tangled up, amen, on the errors of your past. The past is the past. Even if you wanted to, there's nothing you can do about your past. So why are you going to spend your good days worrying about your past days when there's nothing you can do about it? Rejoice and live and love in the present. But I want to say this, my brothers and my sisters, and I'm done. But it's, it's time for us. Amen. I'm talking to you. Saints everywhere, it's time for us to reach out to those who have erred from the faith. And James said, we need to turn them around. And when we turn them around, we have to understand this. 
we have covered a multitude of sin. God has. God has covered a multitude of sin. And they have been saved, amen, from sin and death. The wages of sin is what? Yeah. What's the gift of God? Eternal. Eternal life. Amen. So we want our loved ones, amen, to enjoy heaven even as we plan to enjoy heaven. Amen. And those that have gone astray have erred from the truth. My brothers and my sisters, we have the awesome task. Jesus wants us to be in the restoration business. He started it when he saved us. And he wants us to use our salvation to help save others. So that is my challenge to each and every one of us. If you know someone, and I know we all do, if there's someone that you don't see in church today that you would love to see, have seen or you would love to see, reach out. Reach out. You have to call them and let them know. We love you. We miss you. Da, 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 da. You know, and start building that relationship and be the influencer that God has made you to be. We serve an awesome God. Maybe you're here. I'm done. Maybe, maybe you're here and you have not received Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. I want to give you an opportunity to receive Jesus and make him your personal Lord and Savior. Amen. If you're here and you have not received Jesus and you want to receive him to your life, just lift, just raise your hand. All you do is just raise your hand. Amen. Just raise your hand. Amen. 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 You know, God, God's doing a lot of wonderful things. Yes, yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. 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 And I'm excited about what God is doing. Oh, yes. Amen. God is in the saving business. Yes. Amen. 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 I do want to Amen. Acknowledge, amen, and just give glory and honor to the Lord, amen. And I want to uh, reach out. We had uh, quite a few people last Sunday. You all didn't. Uh, probably wasn't previous, amen, uh, to see what the Lord did last week. But we had uh, several people that confess Jesus as the Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. And I want, amen, amen. I want to encourage, amen. Encourage you, amen, to hear the voice of the Lord. Amen. Amen. And I also want to encourage you and let you know, amen, in this Christian journey, if you need, amen, someone to talk to, amen, I'm here. Amen. The deacons are here. Amen. This entire congregation is here. Amen. Uh, we have, um, a lot, amen, of people, amen, that I have confidence in, amen, when it comes to their walk yes. with the Lord, amen, amen. And I encourage you, amen, to seek out, amen, first of all, seek out the Lord, amen. amen. Spend time with him in prayer and reading your Bible. Come to Sunday school, amen, Bible study, amen, amen. And just know, amen, there are people here, amen, that's willing to help support and guide you and don't be afraid amen um, or ashamed amen to reach out amen because we're here for you amen amen and to those amen um, that are watching us amen by way amen of our media ministry amen if you have not received Jesus I want to invite you to receive him into your heart amen and those amen that uh on last week, amen, also, amen, uh, wanted to have a fresh start because we declared that God is the God of new beginnings. Yes. Amen, amen. And if you made the, the effort, amen, to begin, amen, a new, fresh, new start with the Lord, amen, 
I want to encourage you. Amen. Stand fast. Yeah. Hold on to God's unchanging hand. Yeah. And I don't care what, amen, the enemy or anyone tries to tell you. Amen. I want you to be confident. God has wiped your slate clean yeah. and walked yeah. in the newness yeah. of life, yeah. which is in Christ Jesus. We did have, amen, uh, a hand, amen, amen, to want to give their heart to the Lord. Amen, amen, amen. We just want to thank God for that. Amen, amen. Because, amen, uh, I'm going to do, I, I saw something. I just had a little bit more confidence in God. Amen. The Lord revealed something to me uh, during our revival. Amen, amen. I know we have, amen, this uh, situ ongoing situation we have as related to the pandemic, amen, amen. But the altar of the Lord has been bare long enough. Amen, 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 amen. So I want to, uh, first of all, we're going to have prayer, amen, amen. And understand this, we walk by faith and not by sight. Amen. I don't want you, uh, I'm not encouraging you, I'm not telling you to do anything that you're not comfortable with. Amen. But what I do what I do want to do, amen, if you want to uh, come, we're going to have prayer. Oh, we, got, we got communion today, too, though. We got communion. Let, so let me do this. We'll do this. We'll do, the, we'll do the prayer after communion. Amen. Before communion, amen, we had someone, amen, to lift their hands, amen, to want to receive Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior. We want to take care of that first. Amen. That supersedes everything. So I'm going to ask, amen, uh, this brave person, if you will, amen, I uh, want you to come to the altar. Amen. Last week, amen. Last week we had uh, somebody give God some Right hand of God's Father, make intercession. 
Anybody here that, that will sing us a song? 